Boom. 그게 아나스타샤의 설계도라는 걸 어떻게 증명할 거지? 타이크루 got out of bed to find the source of the vibrations. Taikru lifted Zenya a sleeping blanket and examined it. Sure enough, a cell phone came out from under the pillow. It was Zenya as abandoned or left behind cell phone. There was a message visible in front of the phone screen. Taikru tried to check the contents, but the phone's lock function was activated. Taikru tried pressing the password. Number Zenya. Had entered into an old phone at the armory? Sure enough, it was the same password. The phone immediately unlocked, but Taikru began to doubt for no reason, and muttered in his heart, Am I shameless? Looking at the contents of someone else's cell phone, without permission? Taikru muttered again in his heart. All this time Taikru had a belief. Don't want to interfere with other people's business and don't want to be disturbed by others. Then Taikru muttered again should. I go against that belief and check the messages. But this might be his private message, which has nothing to do with the mission. No, I should open it. This is a chance to confirm Zenyat's true nature. Right now Taikru was torn in his mind between opening it or not. And finally Taikru decided to open the message. Then Taikru turned on his laptop and connected Zenya's cell phone to his laptop. Even though he had decided Taikru was still in turmoil in his mind. Actually Taikru was reluctant to do something like this. But he wanted to confirm Zenya's trustworthiness. What exactly is Zenya doing? Did Zenya join this mission just to get the blueprints like she said? Or something else? Taikru tried to dispel his suspicions and worries about Zenya, figuring everything out properly. Then Taikru inserted the USB into the laptop slot. With a nervous mind, Taikru looked through the list of files on Zenya's cell phone storage device. Fortunately, the hacking program was safe. Taikru started running the program unloaded. All the files on Zenya's phone. When certain commands were entered, all the information was displayed at once. Even files that had been deleted or changed could be recovered without any problems. After all the files were sent on Taikru's laptop, the phone's connection from the laptop's USB was removed. The unconfirmed message icon was still floating on the phone screen. In most cases, it is impossible to find any trace of hacking. Among the messages loaded on the computer, Taikru checked the most recently arrived message. It was a rather long message. Message contents finally resolved the error in SS29. We are currently conducting additional inspections to see if there are any other defects. The final results will be announced two days later in front of everyone present. Come and join us. The weapon and the problem had been resolved recently. However, it was not why the message reached Zanya. Based on the content of the message, all the recipients were people involved in the development of the SS-29 doesn't Zanya have nothing to do with it. Taikru muttered in his heart, then suddenly the door to the room opened, and there was a voice. You're doing something useless. Taikru was startled by the sudden voice. Before Taikru realized it, Zenya was already standing in the doorway, and let out those words. Suddenly, a chill ran down Taikru's spine. Taikru couldn't sense Zenya as presence at all. And how long he had been silent at the door. It wasn't that Taikru's senses were dull. It was just that Zenya was like a ghost. Suddenly disappearing and suddenly appearing. Then Zenya opened her voice again. If you ask me to show it, I will show it to you. Zenya said calmly. Taikru was surprised by the calm voice. Although Zenya was basically a shameless man, he was not in a position to act like that at the moment. 
Then Xenia took her cell phone and gave it directly to Tai Kru. Xenia opened a few messages and showed them to Tai Kru. Then Tai Kru glanced at them. How did this all happen? Tai Kru asked Xenia. I stole it. Do you remember when you went to Bogdanov's house? You met a woman named Olga? Before we left, I asked her to give me her contact information. When I entered her number, I also installed a duplicate application. This is different from a typical hacking program or virus. Even an expert can't know that something like that has been installed. And it naturally gets transmitted to the other recipients as well, through messages. And it seemed that Olga was in frequent contact with the Bogdana family. Xenia said in a serious tone explaining everything to Tai Kru. Xenia explained as he took out his cell phone. Tai Kru looked at he doubtfully and then turned his gaze to Xenia's cell phone. It's true. Each member's information, including call records, messages, contact contents, photo albums, notes, and saved schedules were all copied on Xenia's phone. It seemed Xenia was right. He had hacked into Bogdanov's people. Tykru muttered in his heart. That had slightly dispelled his doubts about Xenia. Okay, that's good. But why are you hiding this from me? If I don't find out the contents of the message first, are you going to pretend not to know it until the end? Tykru said to Xenia in an annoyed tone. That's right. I had no intention of sharing my business acumen with you. Just because we're co-workers. Did you ever think of me as your co-worker anyway? Xenia said in his arrogant tone. Even though Taikru was criticized like that, Taikru couldn't say anything. Because Taikru knew. All this time Xenia knew that he didn't trust her. Even so, Xenia's words were like a slap to Taikru. Then Taikru returned the phone to Xenia with a grim expression on his face. Taikru was about to close his laptop, but Xenia stopped him. Xenia pressed Taikru's hand and leaned her face into Taikru's side, then whispered softly, Although it's only temporary, we are currently co-workers. Do you not believe me at all and try to hack me? Xenia said in a very soft tone next to Tai Kru's ear. Tai Kru slowly turned his head to the side. Xenia grinned softly. A tingling breath hit Tai Kru's neck. Tai Kru gasped and reflexively closed his laptop with Tai Kru's hand still pressed by Xenia's hand. Then once again, Xenia opened her voice in a whisper. If you treat you coldly, I can get hurt too. Xenia said in a soft tone next to Tai Kru's ear. Tai Kru once again just stunned into silence without saying anything and could only mumble. What nonsense is that? Even nonsense has its limits. Tai Kru muttered in his heart. Then Tai Kru tried to react as if he didn't hear Xenia's ambiguous words. Then Tai Kru quickly changed the subject. It's time to focus on work. Tai Kru said, Okay, now that we've gotten the information that the SS-29 problem so it looks like we have to move forward in earnest. Tai Kru said again in a serious tone, as if the previous thing never happened. Okay. Xenia said, they're going in, wouldn't it be easier if we broke in before they did? Tai Kru said again, this time Xenia didn't give any response, he just nodded her head. Then Tai Kru opened his voice again, when would be a good time? Tonight, tomorrow morning, or later in the afternoon after we've rested a bit? Tai Kru asked Xenia, again. Xenia gave no response and just stared at Tai Kru. Then still confused, Tai Kru muttered to himself, Whoever hears me, they'll think I'm making plans to go out. Tai Kru felt uncomfortable with Xenia's gaze. Then Tai Kru with a puzzled expression, asked Xenia, Why do you look like it's so easy for you? I've seen from all sides that they're 
is no corner that can be entered from the Bogdan of residence. Tai Kru said, only then did Sanya let out his voice. That's because you're just trying to find a way to hide like a rat. Even though we can enter through the front door, Xenia said in his arrogant tone. Taikru only responded to Xenia's words indifferently while muttering in his heart. You can go and ring the doorbell, and they will greet you with a welcome, sir. Taikru muttered in his heart again, in a mocking tone. If that's easy, then how? Taikru asked Xenia. You can use my plan to get in, Xenia said. The hacker app I showed you earlier, not many people know about it. Xenia said, are you trying to make a fake transaction using the hacking app and make an official visit to Bogdanov's mansion and pretend to be an arms dealer? Taikru said to Xenia again, it's possible. Xenia replied, but what if they don't respond to our offer? Taikru asked again, no way. This is a weapons program jointly developed by America and Korea. They will try to see it at least once. Xenia said again, How can you be sure? There is no way they will easily trust us. They say that trust is very important in the transaction of military goods. Taikru said in a serious tone, I'm here. Why are you so worried? You seem to forget. I'm also a businessman who plays a role in this business. No one doubts the products I sell. Xenia said in his arrogant tone, Because you're so confident, I feel you have the sharpness of an anti-ball. Taikru said in a mocking tone, Are you sure you're going to do all that? That would be a big loss for you. Taikru said again, There's no greater loss than not having Anastasia. Xenia replied quickly, if that's what you're thinking, there's no reason to refuse. In a situation where all intrusion routes are blocked, it's hard to find a better method. Then Xenia showed a photo of a middle-aged man on his cell phone. Sergei Ilyevich Bogdanov, the owner of the Bogdanov residence. He is a distant relative of Vissarion. He's also quite influential in Russia. You can get information about him on the internet. He's very interested in weapons, especially American-made weapons, and he's a gun fanatic. Xenia said in a serious tone, a serious conversation ended between the two of them. And when night fell around 11 p.m., Taikro quietly woke up and carefully climbed down the stairs of the bunk bed, while Xenia was fast asleep at the bottom of the bunk bed, not moving at all. Taikru looked up at Xenia's face just in case. He breathing was regular and calm. Taikru left the room after confirming several times that Xenia was completely asleep. Taikru slowed his pace and walked past his room and was about to head to the innkeeper's room. Taikru knocked on the door and said, Sorry for disturbing you so late at night. Can I borrow your phone? I want to make an international call. Taikru said. Taikru made up a lie. Taikru said he dropped his phone in the toilet. He wanted to call his mom in Korea because it was his birthday today. The innkeeper has an annoyed look on his face and reluctantly lets Taikru in to use the international call. After carefully explaining how to calculate the cost of the call, Taikru readily agrees and has no problem with the rate. Then Taikru dialed the number he wanted to call by adding his country code. A moment later, hello, Zhang Wyun. Taikru greeted, from the phone, senior? What's wrong with suddenly calling me? Zhang Wyun said, he immediately realized that it was Taikru's voice and was surprised. What's going on? Why is the number different? Where are you, senior? Zhang Wenyun said again. His stuttered voice didn't show any emotion like excitement or longing. I have something to ask you. Taikru said. Taikru couldn't explain the details to Zhang Wenyun. Even colleagues who were members of the same organization were strictly forbidden from revealing the details of the mission. That's the reason why Yin Zhongwu didn't know. 
Ty Cruz's whereabouts and what mission he was doing this time. I've sent a picture to your email. Please find out what he is, what his profession is. Find out all the information about him. Ty Cruz said again. When John Wenyun opened his email, Xenia's handsome photo was clearly displayed there. Who is he? Zhang Wenyun asked with a curious tone. Looks like you're calling me because you don't know about him, right? Zhang Wenyun said again. Because I don't know. That's why I told you to find out. Find out quickly and call back to this number. Tai Cruz said. Have you changed your cell phone? Zhang Wenyun asked again. Yes. Something happened. Tai Cruz said. While muttering in his heart. It's even a miracle I'm still alive and can call you right now. Alright. I'll look for the information as soon as possible. Then Zhang Wenyun hung up the phone. Besides his genius hacking skills, Zhang Wenyun was a junior who was very close to Tai Kru. After finishing the call, Tai Kru went out. As Tai Kru walked back to his room, a light came from the kitchen. And there were the sounds of two people talking. Tai Kru looked into the kitchen out of curiosity. A familiar back figure caught his eye. Sure enough, it's Zenya. He suddenly looks back. In front of him was a bottle of vodka. It turned out that Zenya was talking to the innkeeper. Then Zenya asked calmly, as if he had already heard her. Who are you calling? Zenya asked Tai Kru. My mom. Taikru replied in a slightly nervous tone. Usually when Taikru called his mother, Zenya would tease him in a mocking tone. But this time Zenya's reaction was different. It seemed like Zenya realized something and just looked at Taikru with a calm expression. Taikru who saw Zenya's inept expression decided to leave the room before the atmosphere became more awkward. Then Taikru hurriedly greeted the innkeeper and glanced at Zenya. Didn't you sleep? Taikru asked Zenya. I'll go back to sleep in a moment. Zenya replied. Then Taikru walked to his bedroom. Taikru closed the door and climbed into his bunk bed. Then Taikru pulled the blanket up to his neck and covered his whole body. Right now Taikru had a lot of thoughts about this and that. Then Taikru thought there was nothing better than sleeping at this time to improve his physical condition, physically and mentally. Taikru tried to force himself to sleep. Outside the window, it was snowing again. Taikru's whole body went limp and his eyelids became heavy. Taikru lay facing the wall and fell into a deep sleep. Suddenly, the door that had been closed opened. Zenya entered and walked towards the bed. Zenya finished the whole bottle of vodka by herself. So it was a good situation for a good night's sleep. However, instead of returning to his bed, he reached out his hand and grabbed Taikru's bed. Because Zenya was so tall, the back of Taikru's head was immediately visible. He straight back repeatedly rose and fell as she breathed in. Zenya watched the scene as Taikru slept for a few moments. It was only a moment, but his blue eyes shone with a strange luster. He didn't even blink his eyes for a moment. Then after seeing enough, Zenya climbed onto his bed and lay down. Taikru's eyelids, which had been tightly closed, suddenly opened. Taikru looked at the dark wall and thought for a long time. Taikru could feel that someone was watching him, but he thought it was just a dream. Then he closed his eyes again. The next day, they prepared for the mission they had planned. Shall we go now? Taikru Zenya said to Taikru. Taikru nodded as he tied his tie. Taikru put on his suit neatly after a long time. Usually Taikru wears a semi-suit, but today Taikru is more formal. The tie tightened around his neck, making him uncomfortable. As Taikru was straightening his clothes in front of the mirror, Zenya suddenly appeared behind him. 
Then Xenia puts his fur coat on Tycru's shoulder. Tycru was surprised by what Xenia did, muttering, Do I look shabby as a guest? Do I look out of place? Tycru muttered in his heart with a confused thought. The fur coat had fur with softness, it was heavier than expected. Taikru felt like wearing armor made of steel. Taiku, who was enjoying the feel of the fur, suddenly looked in the mirror and was stunned for a moment. Taikru felt that he had never looked smaller than other people. But when he looked in the mirror this time, Taikru looked smaller. He looked like a teenage boy who stole his father's clothes. The fur coat was quite large and long. The end of the coat seemed to be dragging on the floor. Here, I didn't fit into it. Taikru said as he took off the fur coat and pleased Xenia back. Then we see Xenia smiling strangely. It was obvious that Xenia was doing it on purpose. For some reason, he was doing intriguing things. But it was just a trick to provoke Taikru. Then Taikru ignored Xenia a strange gaze and walked out of the room. The two of them now head to Sergei Ilyaborch's residence. Taikru initially wanted to sit in the back seat of the car, but then he moved to the seat next to Xenia. Here Taikru disguised himself as a guest invited by Xenia. Then Xenia immediately drove the car. The car quickly left the inn. The wind that blew all night blew away the snow, erasing all traces of the snowy field. After some time passed, they arrived in front of Bogdanov's mansion. Let's go in, Taikru said to Xenia. Okay, as the master instructed, Xenia said in a mocking tone. Xenia laughed and stepped on the gas pedal without warning. The car passed through the driveway and reached the front gate in no time. At the gate they were confronted by several guards. Quickly get down and raise your hands, one of the guards said. Taikru and Xenia immediately got out of their car. It wasn't long before Sergei Ilyaborch was standing in front of the main door. It looked like he had personally come to welcome the uninvited, guests who had come unexpectedly. The guards made sure that everything was safe. Xenia and Taikru stared at each other. One of the guards couldn't stand the moment and pulled Taikru out. He pushed Taikru into the car body and searched him. All firearms were confiscated, including the pistol he wore around Taikru's waist. The same applies to Xenia. Then suddenly Sergei Ilyaborch opened his voice. How did you get here? Sergei said in a stern tone. We wanted to offer you some good stuff, so I thought I'd show it to you. Xenia said. Taikru and turned to Xenia and said, Is this going to work? Taikru said in a low tone. This is not a product you can get anywhere else. I'm sure you like it. Let's talk about it inside. Xenia said with his negotiation skills. It was a voice that would charm anyone who heard it. Was that why they call him a businessman? Now Taikru felt a strong confidence in Xenia's skills. Then Sergei smiled awkwardly and looked at Xenia and Taikru in turn. Then Sergei Ilyaborch invited them both into the mansion. Taikru tidied up his rumpled clothes and followed Xenia from behind. It seemed they had succeeded in stimulating Sergei's interest, and the plan was off to a good start. Before long, the two were led to Sergei's private study. Sergei, who was sitting at the end of the table, offered to shake hands. Long time no see, he shook hands with Xenia first. Xenia nodded lightly and welcomed Sergei's hand. Then Sergei glanced at Taikru with a look of interest. Xenia quickly introduced Taikru. He is a member of the Korean Intelligence Agency. Then Taikru extended his hand first. I am Lim Dae Hyung. Taikru introduced himself as Mr. Lim. Sergei took Taikru's hand without hesitation. Nice to meet you, Mr. Lim, Sergei said. There was a ring on each of Sergei's thick fingers. Suddenly Sergei's fingers subtly tickled the center of Taikru's palm. 
Then Taikru gasped and withdrew his hand reflexively. Xenia noticed what Sergei was doing and laughed softly. Then Sergei started the conversation, we don't have much time, so let's get to the point. You said you brought something good? Sergei asked. Xenia also began his planned explanation. Although the industry is not yet known, but there was a program created jointly between Korea and the United States about three months ago. The two countries who realized the importance of gathering information early on. With that program, there is no need to send elite agents to directly steal information or break into strong security networks. In fact, it is hacking, but it never leaves any traces. You don't need to risk direct contact with the enemy. All you have to do is briefly borrow the communication device of one of the acquaintances. When the acquaintance sends a phone call, SNS message, text message, or email to the enemy, the malicious code is automatically transferred. This allows you to understand all the information coming in and out of the enemy's phone in real time. The other party will never know that the information was leaked. Isn't that very interesting? Xenia said with an eye for detail. It sounds like something out of a movie. Sergei said, but now it's real. Xenia said again. On the other hand, Taikru only listened to Xenia's words who was negotiating with Sergei. Then Xenia took out his cell phone. Sergei, with some hesitation, quietly took it. The first menu he checked was messages. As he looked at the thousands of messages, his cheeks twitched intermittently. It was a mysterious expression that seemed to both smile and not. How would you feel if you found out the messages you sent only to a certain person, but could be seen on a third party's cell phone? Xenia said. Then, Sergei immediately put down the phone. There's no need to answer that now. If you want, I'll wait for your answer for another day or two, Xenia said, and so the negotiations ended. Sergei looked at Xenia with meaningful eyes. Then Sergei thought for a moment and finally nodded. All right, let's think about it and decide. It may not be cheap, but it's such an interesting item that I don't want to miss it. Can you guys stay here in the meantime? Sergei said with a friendly smile. It would take at least a day for those related to SS-29 to arrive. For Sergei, it was a matter that needed to be decided before it happened. In other words, SS-29 had to be found a day before Sergei made that decision. After all was said and done, Taikru and Xenia went to their respective rooms. Taikru was relieved that they weren't living in the same room this time. Taikru entered his room. He walked along the wall and looked at the window. After carefully examining the shape of the window frame and the glass material, he tried to pull in and push out. The window still didn't budge. Besides, there was a cliff outside. Everything was as expected. The room was full of tight security. Then Taikru took out a lighter from his pocket. It was a small device that used high temperature heat to pierce glass or thin steel plates. It was previously used at the Bogdanov residence. When the crater was pulled out, a long tube came out. Bending it with a ruler and turning the flint wheel, a large hole was made in the window. When Taikru pressed the timer device was installed, soon a clicking sound rang through the air. Taikru took off his watch, opened the inner cover, and took out an ultra-small memory chip. Taikru connected it to his phone and loaded the saved file. Immediately, the floor plan of the mansion was displayed on the phone screen. Taikru could now understand the structure of the building at a glance, as if he were viewing the mansion from the air. The hidden spaces in the walls and floors were also 
indistinctly visible. Then Tycro sent the floor plan diagram of the Sergai mansion to Xenia, and deduced the storage location of SS-9. There were three or four places Tycro could guess. The basement, the spire attic, behind the second bookcase in the study, and the space inside Sergei's bedroom. Tycro tried to communicate with Xenia by pressing the communicator in his ear. The chat through the communicator began. I'll be in charge of the investigation in the study. I thought it would be fun to see how tight the security is. Xenia said, don't kill someone for no reason. It's hard to clean up after that. Tycro retorted, I never killed anyone who was innocent. I only did the right thing to protect myself. Xenia said back, as if justifying all his actions. Doing the right thing, like that's not the right word to want. Tycro retorted, on the other hand, Xenia laughed out loud. Because she heard Tycro's words, hearing Xenia's happy laugh, Tycro immediately turned off their communication device. As soon as Tycro finished communicating with Xenia, Tycro looked back and forth between the door and the bathroom. Tycro quickly made up his mind and headed to the bathroom. There would be surveillance cameras hidden not only in the hallways and stairwells, but also in ordinary places such as fire extinguishers, picture frames on the walls and flower pots. Since they came, security has been tightened. In a situation where Tycro wasn't sure where SS-9 was, judging from its appearance, there seemed to be a vent installed in the ceiling of the bathroom. The vents in all the rooms were connected together, extending all the way to the top of the tower to exhaust air. The basement is no exception. Tokchip entered and locked the bathroom door and turned on the shower water. The water flowed down, masking the sounds that could arouse suspicion. Then, Tycro stepped into the toilet and removed the vent cover. As Tycro stuck his head through the vent, he saw a dark hallway. There wasn't much room, but it didn't seem like it would be difficult to navigate. Tycro easily climbed to the ceiling. The low ventilation ceiling immediately pressed against his back. The slightest movement produced a puff of dust that tickled Tycro's nose and throat. Then Tycro buried his nose in his arm and coughed softly. Then Tycro turned on the flashlight on his head and looked forward. Now Tycro could see about a meter in front of him. Tycro took a deep breath and started crawling, crossing his elbows one after the other. Tycro was very careful because the ceiling would touch his back. As Tycro passed through the room and entered the hallway, he heard loud conversations coming from below. They seemed to be guards guarding the front of Tycro's room. Finally, a fork in the road appeared. Tycro turned on his cell phone for a moment and rechecked the floor plan display mansion to get to the basement. He had to turn left. As Tycro turned and moved to the left, a slope appeared. It looked like a path leading down. As before, Tycro put half his weight on one elbow and stretched his upper body. Suddenly he made the sound of his body rubbing against the vantage wall. The sound made one of the guards realize Tycro's presence. Then Tycro quickly kept his balance and stayed still for a moment. It looks like it's coming from above. One of the guards said, pointing his gun at the vantage point. There's nothing there. It's been a while since you've been to tents, and there are rats roaming the attic anyway, said one of the other guards. Tycro, who was doing his best to keep his balance, his hands holding his body against the wall, started trembling, and after a while his hand strength reached its limit. Then his hand slipped due to sweat, then his body fell with a thud. The vantage ceiling also shook violently. Tycro held his breath and looked at the situation below. His heart was beating fast. Every minute and second seemed to be on the edge. Tycro waited a few seconds 
to raise his head, but there was no sign of anyone noticing his current presence. It's so strange. Why didn't anyone hear such a strong sound? Tykro muttered to himself, breathing a sigh of relief. Then Tykro took a moment to catch his breath and started moving again. Tykro turned around and crawled along the hallway again. Tykro finally reached the basement. The vents in the basement were vertical, cut like chimneys. The height seems to be from meters at the longest and to meters at the shortest. Then Tykro jumped down without hesitation. His falling speed and weight worked together to crush the bottom vent cover. As soon as he landed on the floor, dust flew everywhere. His vision became blurry. There were all sorts of trash piled up in the basement. Among them, what caught Tykru's attention was something covered in a thick top. It was quite large. Tykru immediately approached and opened it. The closed top was lifted at once. Dust flew out again. This time, Tykru couldn't stop sneezing. When Tykru reflexively opened his eyes, the strength in his shoulders was gone. What was covered wasn't the weaponry he thought it was. It was just an old piano, almost like an antique. Ah, uh, an annoyed sigh escaped his mouth, then muttered in his heart, I've worked hard to get this far, but didn't get anything. What frustrated him even more was that he had to return to his room by passing through the ventilation again. Now all Tykru could think about was, how was he going to get up to the Fermeter high vantage point? Then Tykru remembered, he was carrying a special robe that had been modified into a camera. When he pressed the camera button, a long rope that was launched together with the lens cap entered the vantage hole. Tykru went back down the same hallway to get back to his room. Tykru had just passed the point where the hallway led to his room, when suddenly there was a knock on the door. Xenia never knocked. Could it have been Sergei or one of his guards? Tykru muttered nervously. After a momentary gasp, Tykru hurriedly left the hallway and climbed down from the vantage point of his bathroom. There was a knock on the door again. Then came the sound of the door opening. It was true. It was Sergei. He entered Tykru's room and looked around, as if searching for Tykru's whereabouts. Then Sergei headed to the bathroom because he heard the sound of the shower running. The bathroom was locked, but Sergei opened it with the spare key he had. Just as the bathroom door opened, the steam that filled the bathroom came out through the crack of the open door. Then Tykru came out without wearing a single thread on his body. It was as if she had just finished bathing. His black hair was wet and disheveled. His firm, muscular body was also wet and glistening with water. Sergei's eyes watched Tykru's masculine body with fascination. What happened? Tykru asked Sergei, who had not taken his eyes off Tykru's lower body. Me, me? Oh yes, it's almost dinner time. Let's eat together, Sergei said in a stammering tone. As Sergei stammered, his eyes slowly traveled down Tykru's chest and then down to his lower abdomen. Then Tykru took a bath towel and wrapped it around his waist. Only then did Sergei come to his senses. Did you need to check me into the bathroom just to take me to dinner? Tykru asked Sergei, oh, sorry if I offended you. I've called you how many times, but there's no answer. So I'm afraid something bad has happened inside, sighed Sergei who was giving an absurd explanation. Then Sergei walked out of the room, telling Tykru to come downstairs immediately and have dinner with him at the restaurant on the first floor. Then he quickly left Tykru's room. Without showing any expression, Tykru sat down immediately, sighing with relief. UHH? I almost got caught by Sergei. Tykru muttered to herself. Meanwhile, in the dining room, Xenia, 
Sergei and Hong Ye Wook were enjoying dinner, talking about weapons. Xenia, who had been talking, suddenly stopped talking after making a contact with Tai Kru. Tai Kru came into the dining room after getting dressed. His gaze upon entering the room immediately met Xenia's eyes. And Sergei also raised his palms and glanced at Taikru who was now neatly dressed. Then Sergei invited Taikru to sit next to him. This was Taikru's first time meeting Hong Ye Wook in person. Taikru's eyes met with Hong Ye Wook's. It seemed like Taikru's seat had already been assigned by Sergei right next to his. Then Taikru sat down and looked at the various foods on the table. Sergei nodded and said, Welcome. Taikru was reluctant, but there was no reason to refuse the seat Sergei had prepared. Then Taikru quietly looked at Xenia who was seated right in front of him. He casually sat down while enjoying the meat dish. Taikru's gaze, which had been on Xenia, now shifted to Hong Ye Wook. Hong Ye Wook did not participate in the conversation at all and just filled his stomach with food. After finishing his meal, he quickly left the dining room. Before leaving, he glanced at Tai Kru with a sardonic look. Then Sergei immediately informed Tai Kru that Hong Ye Wook was a guest staying temporarily at his house. Then Sergei discussed the hacker application offered by Xenia. Is the hacking program you mentioned used in Korea and America? Sergei asked. I don't want to comment on anything other than weapons related information. Tai Kru said. Oh sorry. I guess I was too rash to ask that now. Sighed Sergei, who had never taken his eyes off Tai Kru's face since the beginning. Then can I know what your hobbies are, or something you're interested in? Sergei asked Taikru with a soft tone and a teasing look. Why are you so curious about other people's hobbies? Taikru said, then muttered in his heart. And what was that look? Taikru did not respond to Sergei's question and looked at Xenia who was now also glancing at him. Xenia, with his chin resting on his arm, seemed to be teasing Tai Kru, who was being provoked by Sergei. There was no sign that he was going to open the conversation or try to help Tai Kru. Then suddenly Xenia rose from his seat and said, I'll go in first. I'm very tired right now. You too? Please continue the conversation. Xenia said with a fake smile. It looks like Xenia did that on purpose. Taikru looked at Xenia with an annoyed look for deliberately leaving his alone with Sergei. Now, in the dining room, it was just Taikru and Sergei. Then Sergei suddenly moved his chair closer to Taikru and asked, Are you married? Or did you have a lover? Or something like that? Sergei asked Taikru, smiling kindly, Whether the first have a lover or not? Does it have anything to do with the decision about our business? Taikru asked back with a forced smile. Suddenly Sergei's hand landed on the back of Taikru's hand. His thick lips moved mischievously as he looked into Taikru's face. Not only did it land on Taikru's palm, Sergei's fingers now began to wander up Taikru's unbuttoned sleeve. Taikru is very annoyed by the movement of Sergei's fingers. Taikru, who felt he was being harassed, immediately got up from his seat. As Taikru got up, Sergei's hand that had been on the back of Taikru's hand was blown away. Sorry, I suddenly had some urgent business to attend to. Taikru said in a polite tone, even though she found it very disgusting. Then Taikru walked out with a forced smile, so as not to diminish his respect as a guest. Taikru left Sergei alone at the dining table, looking disgruntled. As Taikru entered his room, he stopped because Xenia proudly occupied his bed as if it were her bed. Taikru glares at Xenia with cynical and annoyed eyes. 
Taikru closed the door, then walked over to Xenia and asked, What's going on? You said you wanted to take a look at Sergei's study? Taikru said, Yes. I went there. There was a safe. I checked what was inside. It contained gold bars, cash, and documents. Nothing else. Xenia said. Xenia shook his head, as if signaling there was nothing he found. That meant there were only two places left. The secret room inside the spire attic or Sergei's bedroom. If no trace of the SS-29 was found in either place, the mission would be a failure. Tykru muttered, there was nowhere safe to go, but before Sergei changed his mind, we have to finish it tonight. Tykru muttered. Tykru continued to mutter at random in frustration. Then he raised his voice, why don't you just catch Sergei and beat him until he passes out? Tykru said to Xenia, before I do that, my body will probably be destroyed first by being shot by the guards. Xenia replied quickly, Xenia was right about that. The only information the two knew was the size and structure of the mansion. The situation is different now that we enter the enemy's lair. Tykru muttered again. No matter how hard Tykru thought, he could not think of a way out. Then Xenia let out her voice sometimes soft power surpasses swords and guns. You know the term soft power? Xenia asked Tykru. It refers to soft power, but deadly. Suddenly Xenia got up from the bed and walked towards Tykru. Xenia stopped right in front of Tykru's face. The distance was quite close. Then Xenia held Tykru's side neck, pulling Tykru's neck gently to get closer to him. Then Xenia whispered in Tykru's ear softly, That old man, he seems to be crazy about you. And according to rumors, he likes men and likes men with dark skin. Suddenly Tykru's hair stood on end. Not because of Xenia's words, but because of the actions Xenia had taken towards him. Then Tykru came to his senses after a moment of stunned silence. What did you say? Stay away, Tykru said, while pushing Xenia who was teasing him. Are you crazy? I don't have such great enthusiasm, Tykru said to Xenia again. Tykru knew what Xenia meant to say it like that. Think about it. You can get into Sergei's room easily, without crawling or rolling around. All you need to do is climb into bed, then sleep with him and get him drunk. Then he'll tell you about SS-29 all by himself. Xenia said in a coaxing tone. Tykru loudly rejected the proposal while walking to the window. He said, don't keep pushing me down strange paths. I would never want to do such a thing. Suddenly Xenia handed over a location tracking indicator device. A red dot representing the target was flashing near the coordinates. This meant that the target was wandering near the location tracking indicator. It turned out that Xenia had also installed a tracking device on Sergei's body. Then Tykru gave a cynical look. He knew what was on Xenia's mind right now, but Tykru doesn't respond. Then Tykru threw the tracking device he was holding onto the bed and said, Anyway, I won't do that. Tykru said again in a firm tone. Then suddenly Xenia approached him again, just like he did a moment ago. Right in front of Tykru's face, Xenia opened his voice. Usually men want to conquer women who have many competitors. The more competitors, the higher the value. Xenia said, enigmatically. What do you mean? Tykru said with surprise. Tykru tried to push Xenia's shoulders away a little. But Xenia's shoulders did not move an inch. Then Tykru took a step back. But Xenia had closed the distance completely. Tykru's back was now against the wall of the room. There was no place for Tykru to escape. For a moment, the two of them gazed intensely. Xenia watched Tykru with a passionate gaze. 
It was an unusual gaze. Then suddenly there was a knock and someone's voice at the door. Mr. Lim, are you asleep? It was Sarah Guy's voice. Not yet. Taekru replied quickly and loudly. Next, Taekru was about to head for the door, but Xenia suddenly grabbed Taekru's wrist and threw him against the side of the room's window. Taekru's body jerked, then Xenia's lips smiled, forming a long line. He was smiling strangely. It was obvious that Xenia was plotting his evil plan. What are you doing? Taekru said in an angry tone. Suddenly, Xenia quickly pressed Taekru's body and Xenia's hands without permission and shamelessly trying to unzip Taekru's pants. Then Taekru desperately grabbed Xenia's arm, but his efforts were in vain. Xenia immediately grabbed Taekru's trunk gently and brought it out. Then Xenia rubbed the soft flesh as if it were her own. Are you out of your mind? Stop it. Shit. Taekru continued to let out his swear words, but Xenia didn't care about Taekru's swear words for him. Xenia's hand movements grew stronger and faster. Then Taekru gritted his teeth. Since their bodies were close together, Taekru couldn't kick Xenia or push her away. Taekru intended to bite the bridge of Xenia's nose, but it was difficult. Why their height difference? Then Taekru pushed Xenia's chin away with all his might, but Xenia continued to rub his shaft, getting more intense. Taekru's body, which had been stiffening and struggling, now softened slightly due to the intense sensation. A large amount of liquid collected above the urethra. Xenia gently circled Taekru's glands and unzipped herself. Xenia's large, hard life pillar now billowed out. The pink lump of flesh was fully erect. Xenia placed her massive shaft on the side of Taikru's proboscis. Taikru sighs softly as Xenia brings their genitals together. And the difference in size is now obvious. Suddenly there was another knock on the outer door. Mr. Lim, it was the voice of Sir Guy who was still waiting for Taekru to open the door to his room. Taekru pushed Xenia again, but Xenia brought his body closer and accelerated his movements even more. Xenia rubbed the two stiff rods vigorously. The movement made Taekru's erect hips and trunk turn red. The large hands touching the stiff flesh triggered a subtle pain. It made Taekru's whole body tremble. Then a small moan came out of Taekru's mouth. Taekru's upper body softened little by little. Taekru's head continued to lower right on Xenia's shoulder. Then Xenia squeezed Taekru's chin tightly and hugged him so that he made a contact with Taekru. Then Xenia licks the corner of Taekru's lips gently, while looking into the eyes of Taekru who frowns having reached climax. Taekru moans softly at the unfamiliar sensation. A satisfied smile appeared on Xenia's lips. Xenia licks the side of Taekru's face for a long time with his hot tongue. His blue eyes blaze with lust. Down below, Xenia's still active hands do their thing. Taekru's shaft vibrates every time it rubs against Xenia's shaft. It was as if the big, long thing could pierce through anything. Now Xenia's hands were sticky from the thick liquid that overflowed. Every time Xenia moves his hand up and down, a wet, slippery sound is heard, like an intoxicating rhythm. Taekru's whole body trembled from the delicious sensation of ejaculation. Taekru covered his mouth to prevent the sound of his moan from escaping. The thick white liquid hit Taekru's shirt and fell on the floor. The same was true for Xenia. Taekru's eyes were tightly closed. His eyebrows were also knitted. The sound of muffled moans and harsh exhales float simultaneously into the palms covering his mouth. Xenia silently looked at Taekru's red face, then smiled contentedly again. Taekru's entire body limped helplessly, and his head still rested on Xenia's shoulder. 
then suddenly came Sir Guy's voice again. Mr. Lim, are you okay? I'm going in, sighed Sergei who was opening the door to the room. He went inside without hesitation and was immediately surprised to see a strange sight in front of his eyes. Xenia stood in front of Taikru. Taikru's body completely covered by Xenia's body. Then Xenia straightened his own clothes. Due to the nature of the room that the window could not be opened, the heat and the fishy smell of sperm that could not escape floated in the air. A strange current flowed between the two people standing next to each other. Then Xenia turned to Sergei and smiled happily. While making his voice, please come in, sir. I only came to borrow this book, said Xenia, picking up a book on the table. Then left the room. Just before the door closed completely, Xenia's eyes glanced at Taikru. Xenia smiled meaningfully at Taikyu. Then Taikru glared at Xenia with an angry expression. I feel like hitting her right away. Taikru muttered in annoyance as Xenia closed the door. Sergei cleared his throat and alerted Taikru to his presence. Only then did Taikru snap out of his irritation. What happened? Taikru asked Sergei in a nervous tone. Sergei was about to say something but then closed his mouth. His eyes suddenly fixed on Taikru's crotch. Taikru noticed Sergei's gaze. Sure enough, the zipper of his pants was still left open by Xenia. Xenia is crazy. I thought you would tidy up my clothes too, but he deliberately left it open. Taikru muttered in his heart, annoyed by Xenia's actions. Then Taikru quickly closed the zipper, but Sergei suddenly grabbed Taikru's hand. He whispered meaningfully to Taikru, who was looking at him with a puzzled expression. There's actually one item I'm taking care of right now. Everyone in Russia is very interested in it. They say that if you market it, the price will be worth it. I'd like to hear Mr. Lim's opinion on it, Sergei said, holding Taikru's hand. Then Sergei took Taikru to see the item he was referring to. Taikru thought it was his chance to get into Sergei's room, and so he followed Sergei to his room. There were three entrances to Sergei's room. Along a long hallway with several pictures hanging and sliding doors on either side separating the bed area and guest room. Fingerprint and iris recognition was required each time going through each door. Security cameras were installed at intervals. When a character to monitor every movement of people entering and exiting. It made Taikru wonder what exactly was Sergei hiding so tightly inside his room. Sergei personally opened the last sliding door by swinging it to both sides. The space inside was quite spacious. The circular bed in the center was large enough to accommodate 10 people. It was spread on silk sheets that were almost purple in color. The room even had a spacious bathroom. Taikru stood by the bed aware of the secret room behind it. Judging from the view, there was quite a large secret room there. Suddenly, Sergei said something. Do you want something to drink? I have a nice scotch whiskey, Sergei said in a soft tone. The way he spoke changed as he entered the bedroom. The look in his eyes at Taikru also became stranger. Taikru obediently took the glass Sergei handed her. The unmelted white powder was visible at the bottom of the glass. Then Taikru only pretended to wet his mouth because of the obvious manipulation. Sergei glanced at Taikru and went to his bed. Then he sat with his upper body relaxed and looked Taikru up and down, like a product displayed in a shop window. The mischievous look in Sergei's eyes gave Taikru goosebumps. Then Taikru placed the glass on the table in front of him as he asked, Where is the item you mentioned earlier? Taikru said to Sergei, You're so impatient. It's never too late to make time, is it? The night was still long, Sergei said, as the whiskey in Sergei's hand flowed down the surface of the glass. 
Sergei licked it with his thick tongue while looking at Taikru and smiling strangely. Taikru was immediately uncomfortable to look at. Takchu even felt nauseous. Then Taikru looked away. Meanwhile, Sergei poured the rest of his drink and stood up. Then, while looking at Taikru, he unbuttoned his shirt and pants one by one. Taikru quietly bit her molars and held her patience. Sergei walked towards Taikru, then suddenly rubbed Taikru's waist. Taikru sighed while looking at the ceiling. As Taikru struggled to hold his temper, something hard touched his thigh. Sergei's shaft was now hard against the back of her thigh, as he was only Taikru's shoulder height. Taikru still held back and tolerated Sergei's actions. Suddenly, Sergei rubbed his chin against Taikru's backside and let out a long sigh. It felt like there were tiny insects crawling in Taikru's veins, like a pig in heat jumping on its back and panting. Taikru, who had been holding his temper, suddenly let out his voice. I can't take it anymore. With both hands, Taikru threw Sergei's body which was wearing nothing, to the floor. Sergei's round body floated in the air for a few seconds, muttering to himself. Taikru wiped his hands on his bends. The area Sergei had licked. Pig. How disgusting. I can't stand it. Even perverted behavior. There must be a limit. Taikru muttered quietly in an annoyed tone. Then a moment later, Taikru's cell phone suddenly rang. An unregistered call number appeared on the screen. It appeared to be the contact information of Yu Zhang Wu. Taikru remembered asking him for help. Then Taikru quickly answered the phone without hesitation. Hello. Before Taikru could say anything, Yu Zhang Wu had shouted first. Taikru's eardrums tingled from the unexpected shout. Taikru pulled his cell phone away from his ear for a moment. On the other side of the phone, Yun Zhangwu continued to spout incomprehensible words. What are you doing? What happened to you? Who are you with right now? I've got the information. Him, him, he is. Suddenly the call was cut off. What are you talking about? Hello, hello. Taikru sat on his cell phone. It seemed the internet connection wasn't very good. Their conversation was intermittent. Then Taikru looked back at Sergei. Taikru was very surprised because Sergei, who had been lying on the floor, had disappeared somewhere. As Taikru hurriedly searched for Sergei's whereabouts, suddenly Sergei quickly attacked Taikru's back. Taikru fell but he managed to block Sergei's attack. Sergei had a syringe in his hand. It looked like Sergei was trying to inject a liquid into Taikyu's body. The liquid looks clear at the tip of the needle. Then Taikyu hit Sergei with his knee, which seemed to knock him unconscious. Then Taikyu pressed hard on his vital area, which made him flinch for a moment. Sergei, who was struggling and resisting, soon became unconscious. Then Taikru pushed Sergei's body away. A heavy body fell to the bottom of the bed with a thud. After taking a breath, Taikru got out of bed. Taikru got up and tried to find the key to the secret room, always under Sergei. It must be there, where that perverted man put it. Taikru muttered to himself. Taikru looked back at Sergei who had collapsed helplessly and saw Sergei's pile of clothes. Taikru picked up the clothes that had fallen on the floor one by one. Sergei's belt looked a little strange. There was something similar to a button in the square design. Then the cover opened and a remote control emerged from the belt. I found it. Taikru muttered happily. A naughty smile appeared on Taikru's lips, but suddenly Taikru's head began to spin and his vision began to blur. His body suddenly shook violently, and his legs began to weaken. Then Taikru collapsed on the bed. 
Suddenly, Taikru remembered the syringe Sergei was holding. Taikru didn't realize that Sergei had injected the liquid into her body. What exactly is that liquid? Taikru muttered in his heart. At this time, the back of Taikru's neck felt stiff. In his half-consciousness, Taikru saw a pair of someone's feet coming from a corner of the room. Who is it? Was I hallucinating? Taikru muttered. Taikru wanted to raise his head and examine the mysterious man's face. But his body could not be moved at all. It was only after a long time that Taikru could muster the rest of his strength. He saw the mysterious man's face right in front of him. It was Sanya. Then Taikru muttered again. Since when is he here? And at the same time, Hong Ye Wook's voice came from Taikru's cell phone, which was not disconnected. Hello, senior? Do you hear me? Hello? Suddenly, Zanya walked towards the cell phone and picked it up and turned it off. Then Zanya casually walked towards the bed. As Taikru's entire body was affected by the drug, Taikru's instincts woke up and sounded a warning. Looks like I need to escape from here as soon as possible. Taikru muttered in his mind. Zanya stepped past the unconscious Sergei. As Taikru looked at Zanya's face and smile this time, he felt bad. The man in front of him now was no longer his co-worker. Taikru backed away with all his might. Suddenly, Zanya placed his hands under both of Taikru's armpits, hugged him and lifted him onto the bed. Zanya suddenly fell on Taikru's limp body. Zanya looked at Taikru's face for a moment without saying anything. Taikru's conflicting emotions and thoughts were constantly colliding and crossing. Then Zenya picked up Sergei's belt that had fallen on the bed. The buttons were operated with Zenya's delicate hands. Then a large mechanical sound was heard from somewhere on the wall. One by one, sections of the wall began to slowly rotate. What appeared when the plain wall disappeared was neither a safe nor an armory. It was just a large picture frame hanging there. It was a group photo of about 20 Russian men. Taikru saw many faces he recognized. These were Vissarion and his sons whom Taikru had met at the Pogdanov house. Sergei, lying on the floor, also occupies a place in the photo. But for some reason Sag Bogdanov was absent. It was just a man who looked a lot like Zanya standing right behind Vissarion. No, that's not someone else. That's definitely Xenia. Instantly looking Taikru into the face of Xenia, who was still above him. Xenia smiled with great pride. Then Taikru reached for Xenia's shirt. Xenia just silently watched Taikru's hand holding her by the collar. Deep joy appeared in Xenia as blue eyes as if screaming for victory. Taikru with his remaining strength forcibly opened Xenia's shirt. The buttons popped off and hit Taikru in the face. However, without blinking an eye, Taikru was shocked to witness the truth before his eyes. There was a tattoo engraved in the center of Xenia's chest. It was a pattern Taikru had already seen several times. From the Bogdanov family home, from the back of Boris's hand, from the main gate of this house, and even from the forehead of the deceased Agent Morgan, Taikru had no idea that Xenia could also use camouflage techniques like her. Now the grin on Xenia's face deepened. It turns out that Xenia is Psych Bogdanov himself. Taikru was out of breath as Zenya's body crushed him. Taikru looked at himself helplessly in the ceiling mirror. Suddenly memories of the first time he met Zenya flashed through Taikru's mind. Taikru first met Zenya in the hotel bathroom, and the shocking news he received was a photo of her co-worker, Zenya. Zenya has a personality that fluctuates between being an arrogant and vengeful co-worker, and a ruthless killer time and time again. However, the reason Taikru trusts 
Her is because she is the partner appointed by the head office. When Tai Kru's vigilance reaches its peak, he creates a situation where he has no choice but to consider himself a partner. It was she who guided Tai Kru into the deepest parts of Bogdanov's house, and it was thanks to her that Tai Kru learned of the existence of SS-9 Brew wiretaps. It's absurd to say that his sole purpose was to play me. Is there a problem with the headquarters? Why did they appoint him as my partner? Or maybe he wasn't my partner in the first place. Could it be that the design of this mission went wrong? This is incomprehensible. The only thing that's happening is that I'm going to end up. Taikru muttered in his mind. Then Taikru looked at Xenia. Xenia's appearance was the same as always. Just a little different, including reason and reasoning. The current situation and Xenia's actions, which led to one truth. However, there was still one thing Taikru did not understand. Then Taikru opened his voice softly. Why did you keep me alive until now? Taikru said with a trembling voice. What? I let you live. It seems you've misunderstood. Xenia retorted in his arrogant tone. Taikru still couldn't get over his stupidity. Taikru was being chased by the man he mistook for Psych Bogdanov. Xenia appears in the helicopter and fires his weapon randomly, ignoring his co-workers. He didn't stop firing, and didn't even try to save me as his partner when I was about to drown. It seems that the fact that I'm still alive isn't just due to luck. Taikru muttered again in his mind. Suddenly Xenia let out her voice again. What a marvelous sight. Seeing you struggle to survive all this time. Xenia said in his arrogant tone. To Xenia, Taikru's life and death is nothing more than entertainment for her. You are crazy. Taikru said in an angry tone. Taikru clenched his hands so tightly that his fingernails dug into his flesh. Taikru felt his anger would not go away unless he killed Xenia that day. Then Taikru with all his might aimed a punch at Xenia's face. However, Xenia quickly blocked Taikru's punch with one hand. Taikru gathered all his strength into that punch, but Xenia's hand easily blocked it. Then Xenia quickly countered Taikru's punch as well, and Xenia's punch hit Taikru right in the face. Taikru's left face suddenly felt hot and swollen. Something came out from inside his nose. Soon, red blood began to flow. If it continues like this, I will definitely die at Xenia's hands. Taikru muttered, the survival instinct overriding his anger began to dominate his entire body. Taikru struggled through the pain, but Xenia managed to subdue Taikru by pressing his neck with one hand. Xenia's fingertips made Taikru's breathing labor. Taikru grimaced in pain and struggled, but the Xenia didn't budge an inch. All he did was press down with such force that he almost broke Taikru's neck. But Taikru still tried to get away from Xenia. Taikru hit Xenia's elbow many times. However, the price Taikru had to pay for that attack was very expensive. Xenia suddenly hit Taikru in the chest, making Taikru cough up blood. His lungs burn and his solar plexus burst. Am I going to die like this? In a place like this, like this? Taikru muttered in his heart. The torture didn't end there. Then Xenia pulled out a knife tucked into the end of his leg and quickly stuck the tip of the knife in front of Taikru's eyeball. Taikru was shocked into immobility, but suddenly the knife stopped an inch in front of his eye. While performing his duties, Taikru's life was threatened many times. There were many situations where there was no solution to survival, more so than what he was experiencing now. Even so, Taikru persevered, even when the plane crashed in an exploding secret room, or hundreds of meters deep in the sea. He never gave up. But now, Taikru was thinking about his end. 
After a while, the two of them fell silent, without the slightest movement. No expression could be seen on Zenyatta's face. Is this really psychic Bogdanov? Could I be fooled again by his pranks? Taikru asked himself useless questions. A taut vein suddenly appeared on his forehead that had been missing. Taikru's eyelids couldn't close anymore. It was as if Taikru sensed the end of his life. At this moment, Taikru was still churning in his mind again. Taikru felt like laughing at himself. The image of being with Zenya appeared again. Zenya was familiar with the royal family and could go wherever she wanted. Like Saik Bogdanov, she was experienced in the military industry. I should have realized this when I saw Zenya as armory back then. He was showing off high-tech weapons. Besides, I foolishly trusted the information from headquarters. Taikru muttered again in his mind. A self-mocking smile appeared on Taikru's lips. Even when Taikru was currently out of breath and broke down, he laughed out loud, laughing at his own stupidity. Xenia's indifferent face suddenly broke. A smile of unknown meaning flashed across her face. It was such a quick change that Taikru didn't even notice. Xenia suddenly removed his hand from Taikru's neck. Taikru coughed for a moment and immediately took his breath with a strong survival instinct. Taikru quickly inhaled oxygen. Then Zenya grinned while looking at Taikru, while biting the sharp knife with his teeth. Suddenly Taikru heard the sound of a zipper coming down. One by one, something heavy fell onto Taikru's thigh. It was Zenya's large trunk. The stiffened hard object slid smoothly between Taikru's thighs. Then Zenya took the knife in his mouth and swung it several times. Across Taikru's thighs, the pants that had been neatly wrapped around Taikru's legs are now in tatters, and the incision marks were visible on both of Taikru's thighs. The knife's incision had ripped off several parts of Taikru's pants, including his underwear, until Taikru's hole was clearly visible to Zenya. Then Zenya moved her stiff rod right at the door of Taikru's hole. Taikru only realizes Zenya's evil intentions when his big rod hits Taikru's hole. Zenya helped Taikru, who was struggling desperately with his trembling limbs, and unprepared directly inserted his huge, stiff rod into Taikru's hole. But the huge rod suddenly got stuck at the end of Taikru's hole door. That's because nothing had ever entered the hole before. Then Zenya pulled the rod back, and now the fingers of Zenya's hand were inserted into Taikru's mouth. It was as if Zenya used Taikru's saliva as lubricant, then insert the two fingers into Taikru's hole. Taikru was surprised to strike out in pain. Only then did the tight, narrow hole widen to reveal a protruding gland. Zenya then pulled out his fingers and grabbed. Taikru's shoulders with both hands and squeezed. In that state, Zenya lifted Taikru's waist and inserted his lifeblood all the way to the root. Taikru couldn't move his body at all due to the pressure from Zenya's body. Indescribable pain flooded Taikru. Taikru's eyes widened as he felt penetration for the first time in his life. Zenya's hips twitched forcefully slamming into Taikru's hole. It felt like there was an iron pole driven right through the center of Taikru's body. The inside of Taikru's navel became hot and something oozed out. It slid along the huge pillar and even soaked the coarse pubic hair. The entire body and the muscles of the surprised Taikru also contracted naturally. Zenya furrowed his brows and bit his lip. Taikru's eyes trembled with pain. An uncontrollable rage arose deep within Taikru. It seemed like it would not subside. Even if he tore Zenya apart and killed her outright, 
Xenia smiled more contentedly as she saw Tykru gnashing his teeth in anger. Then, Xenia supported Tykru's legs with her shoulders. As Tykru's waist lifted, Tykru's lower half was exposed. The hole that holds Xenia as stiff rod, which goes wild, starts to feel tingly. Tykru's back muscles tightened. As Xenia as lifelike shaft scrapes the inside of Tykru's hole, Tykru closed his mouth and turned his head. The next moment, Tykru's lower body was pushed all the way by Xenia as hard rod. Continuously, Tykru's whole body trembled again. As Tykru's buttocks and thighs are firmly pressed, there are strong friction sounds in the joints. That's not enough for Xenia. Now Tykru's knees are lifted up, and Xenia presses his chest. As a result, the two people's faces were facing each other, only a few centimeters apart. Tykru's face was a mess, his eyes tightly closed. Tykru refused to look at Xenia's face. Then a moan of pain mixed with a sighing sound spontaneously came out of Tykru's mouth. Who was trying to endure the excruciating pain? Tykru's face turned pale with shame and anger. Xenia observes all the changes in Tykru's expression with her blue eyes and continues to dig in and out. The huge shaft that had swelled to its maximum continued to press into Tykru's narrow hole, mercilessly crushing the inside and eating it up. The narrow entrance slowly loosens and gets wet. Each time Xenia went deeper into the hole, Tykru's body felt like it was splitting in two. Tykru struggled to escape the pain that poured down like torrential rain. If Tykru twisted his waist slightly and tried to move away, Xenia would always bring his lower body closer and press harder. A wet and muddy sound came out of the narrow hole as it was pressed repeatedly. Xenia's white buttocks, which repeatedly collided with Tykru's thighs were now bright red and visibly swollen. As if not wanting to miss the change in Tykru's facial expression, Xenia continued to churn Tykru's guts without changing her position. Occasionally, Xenia turned Tykru over, stimulating Tykru's swollen inner walls and compacting the still hard mucous membrane. Tykru lifted his gaze to her shoulder and lowered his entire body and shook his head in frustration. But the tingling sensation that spread throughout her body didn't go away at all. Tykru's mind became increasingly foggy and dizzy. At some point, the pain from the pounding became too much. All Tykru could feel was an agonizing burning sensation. Xenia straightened his back and took a deep breath. He casually combed her tangled hair and moved her lower body leisurely. When the huge meat was completely encased in the warm mucous membrane, the overwhelming pleasure made Xenia sweat. Then suddenly Xenia ripped Tykru's shirt off with force. All the buttons of his shirt scattered everywhere. Instantly, Tykru's muscular body is clearly visible. Xenia slowly rolled her eyes and looked at Tykru's muscular masculine body. Seeing Tykru's body shiny with sweat, Xenia's mouth involuntarily salivated. Even though Xenia had vented her desire, the feeling of need had not been satisfied. As Xenia straightened her back, the situation below her waist was clearly visible. Through the mirror on the ceiling, Tykru looked away in shame, but to no avail. Xenia quickly goes back to grabbing Tykru's chin and pinning it right in front. This was Tykru's view right in front of the ceiling mirror. Tykru tried to push Xenia's hand away, but she remained motionless. Then Tykru closed her eyes tightly, but Xenia thrust her huge pillar of life even harder forcing Tykru to open his eyes. Then Xenia let out her words. You must raise your head and see. Please appreciate the hard work of the person who made that mirror. Xenia said in a mocking tone. A mischievous smile spread across Xenia's face. 
Unable to bear the insult, Tigro bit his molars again and closed his eyes again. Without despair, Xenia lifted Tigro's crater to increase the depth of her excavation. Xenia pressed Tigro's body with all her strength, trying to crush Tigro's lower half. It felt like the organs in Tigro's stomach were being pushed out. Tigro's stomach became nauseous and he couldn't breathe. It didn't end there. Xenia raised her knees and lifted Tycru's waist again. His waist is bent all the way and his buttocks are thrust forward. The scene was reflected clearly through the mirror on the ceiling. Tycru could see her as glistening with sweat and a large lump of flesh interlocking. Xenia moved slowly and blatantly exposing his big rod, which goes in and out of Tycru's hole. The hole where the big rod was inserted was now wide open. It was as if it had been torn open. When Xenia's rod was completely gone inside Tycru's stomach, Tycru felt uncomfortable. Nausea suddenly reached his throat. Tycru let out all sorts of curses at Xenia. Every time Xenia stomped hers, it felt like Tycru's stomach was being torn apart. Xenia let out an occasional moan of pleasure. Then she let out her voice again. This is more than I expected. Very delicious. Not bad at all, Xenia said, while continuing to stick his big rod. Usually, when Xenia did that with a woman, he never made any sound. Surprisingly, Xenia's voice sounded enthusiastic. His eyes drooped and shone brightly. His eyes were filled with excitement and frenzy, as if he had just experienced something extraordinary. Xenia lowered his upper body while thrusting his shaft into Tycru's hole. Tycru's face suddenly changes again. His breathing is unsteady, and his whole body convulses uncontrollably. Feeling the sensation of being constantly rubbed and eaten by Xenia, Xenia then licked Tycru's exposed neck for a long time. He suddenly raised her teeth. Tycru's limbs trembled again. Xenia's clear bite marks were left beside Tycru's neck. Immediately, blood appeared on the inside of Tycru's neck skin. Tycru's jaw tightened. A few curses did not escape Tycru's mouth. Every time Xenia lifted her waist, Tycru's chest lifted as well. The shiny nipples caught Xenia's attention. Then Xenia grabbed Tycru's chest without hesitation. Then she squeezed and sucked the flat nipple slowly. The movement was very gentle and intense. Tycru unconsciously raised her chest slightly and trembled from the sensation Xenia was doing. Then Xenia let out his voice, your breasts are so big, it seems like they asked you to suck on them. Xenia said in a provoking tone. Tycru's ears burned with embarrassment. He shrugged his shoulders and hit Xenia, trying to break free. However, it actually went against his current sense of desire. Tycru's body stretched. It was due to the drug effect of Sergei's syringe. Xenia gently squeezed and licked the nipples on Tycru's chest with her tongue. The sensation made Tycru's hair rise. Instantly, the curse words that were about to be uttered could not come out of Tycru's mouth, all now stuck in his throat. Tycru's head spun as Xenia pressed the tip of his tongue against his sensitive skin. Tycru's stomach also tightened because of the pleasure. Enjoying the intense pleasure reaction, Xenia took out her teeth and bit the nipple gently. Tycru's waist continued to rise as pleasure spread subtly into him. The more Tycru struggled and squirmed, the harder Xenia's mouth crushed and sucked on his nipple. Soon, the nipple on the other side that was not bitten also became hard. Tycru's eyes gradually became soft from the foreign. Stimulation in an area that no one had touched before. A small sigh came out of Tycru's mouth without his realizing it. Xenia pressed Tycru's knees and shoulders simultaneously, which were trembling from tingling. 
Xenia, who was teasing Taikuro's chest, suddenly looked down. It was because something hard touched her waist. Before Xenia realizes it, Taikuro's erect trunk shows off its presence by pressing against her body. The corners of Xenia's mouth moved up slightly. A look of happiness appeared on her face. Then Xenia let out her voice again. Look at this, how hard it is. Xenia said to Taikuro in a mocking tone. Taikuro's face turned red at Xenia's blatant remark. Meanwhile, Xenia pauses and wiggles her waist with a satisfied look on her face. Until Taikuro's slender buttocks and thighs rub against each other to the point of pain. The long, stiff shaft of his life unceasingly slips in and out of Taikuro's hole. No wonder the skin of Taikuro's belly swells with each insertion of Xenia's shaft until it is torn apart. Xenia was breathing heavily as if he was running a long distance. Suddenly Xenia stretched her back. Then not only the soft skin around the hole, but also the mucous membrane inside came out of the shaft at the same time. Xenia's lips curled again, as he saw that the mucous membrane was at the tip of her shaft's mouth. Once again a nervous moan emerged from Taikru's mouth. Despite his lack of consciousness, Taikru hysterically tried to break away from Xenia by flinging his body left and right. Xenia still continued to bombard Taikru's lower half relentlessly. Taikru lost consciousness several times and woke up again several times. Time seemed to have passed for quite a while, but there seemed to be no sign of Xenia stopping either. Taikru didn't know if he was dreaming or reality. Every time Taikru passed out and regained consciousness, Xenia was always on top of him and still doing the same thing. Excruciating pain assaulted Taikru time and time again, and Taikru repeatedly screamed in pain and then passed out. It wasn't long before a thick white liquid was stuck around his ass and hole. Taikru's entire groin area became slippery, and if Taikru moved the white liquid would spread to his thighs. The bed shook. It was because Xenia had climaxed. Then Xenia sat next to Taikru with her cigar in her hand. Xenia smoked her cigar leisurely, as if to show her satisfaction. Meanwhile, Taikru was still lying limply on the bed face down. His face turned to the side. Then Xenia opened her voice while looking at Taikru. Now, I'll answer your questions one by one. Wouldn't it be unfair if you died without knowing the truth? Xenia said in his arrogant tone. Taikru's eyes were red with anger. The hands that had been relaxed were clenched tightly and firmly. Xenia watched Taikru with a happy smile and suddenly, Xenia reached out her hand and stroked Taikru's disheveled hair gently and said first, Actually, the Anastasia you're looking for never existed. Taikru's previously blurry eyes became clearer. Xenia laughed at him softly. Taikru's brows furrowed. He said, That's impossible. Don't deceive me. What about SS29? Asked Taikru, who still couldn't believe Xenia's words. I don't know how you misinterpreted it as Anastasia, because Anastasia is too precious to be compared to just a missile. Like the SS29. Xenia said again. No way. Is the SS-29 really just a ballistic missile? In Russia, serial numbers with the format SS apply to intercontinental ballistic missiles. But the information about the SS-29 I found in Bogdanov's residence reminded me of the Anastasia. So I thought they must be the same. This weapon was praised for having unprecedented firepower, but in reality, it was assumed to be similar to a ballistic nuclear weapon. Taikru muttered in his mind. Taikru himself fell for Xenia's trick and made a fatal mistake. Now one question after another gnawed at his mind. Then Xenia raised her voice again. 
Anastasia's research has long since failed. There were several problems with her design. We wasted a lot of money, time, and effort developing it. Even the rumor that it exists or is about to be completed has made the whole world excited. Looking at the fact that the Korean and American countries sent you and your dead comrade alone, it should be obvious, right? Xenia said again. Xenia said that while laughing softly and grabbed Tycru's body and turned it over. Tycru's body, which had lost all its strength, was flipped over without any obstruction. Now Tycru's face was right in front of Xenia's face. Xenia's hand that was holding. Tycru's legs slowly moved up and suddenly slipped between Tycru's thighs. Then Tycru's limp little trunk is gently held by Xenia's hand. Playfully, Xenia rubbed Tycru's trunk gently and said, Don't be too upset with me. Do you know about the story of Anastasia, the last princess of Russia? There is still a lot of talk about her end because the death of the royal family is still shrouded in mystery and her remains have not been properly recovered. After being shot dead in the basement, the entire family was left in a mine pit. Those are sad words that are well known from him or from the Romanov family. Of course, being widely known does not mean that it is a true fact. Everything that is unclear always ends up being fake. In fact, after Anastasia's death, many women claimed to be her. Anna Anderson was one of them. At first, she was thought to be an imposter seeking the royal family's wealth. But gradually, evidence and testimonies began to emerge that she might actually be the princess. According to you, what exactly is going on? Xenia asked enigmatically. Suddenly, Xenia stopped talking because there was no response from Taikru. Then Xenia squeezed Taikru's trunk again. This time she squeezed it hard. Taikru gasped in pain. Then Xenia laughed as if such a violent reaction also sounded funny to her. Then Xenia gently stroked Taikru's trunk again which was swollen from the impact of Xenia's huge shaft earlier. Crazy! What are you doing? Tycru said in an angry tone. Xenia continued her explanation while placing her hand deeper between Tycru's thighs and playing with her shaft. The tedious legal battles have continued for decades. The people were split into. Some believed in Anastasia's return and some did not. Time passed and Anna Anderson died. It was a meaningless life, but something was left behind. For decades, this has made many people think that Anastasia might actually be alive, said Zenya again who explained the story in a serious tone. What are you trying to say? I can't understand the gist of the story at all. Tycru muttered in his heart. Then Xenia continued her story. There is one character who always appears in Russian folklore. Koshi the Immortal. As his name suggests, he is strong and no one can kill him. This is the hurdle that the protagonist must overcome and is the pinnacle of adversity. In every story, Kasiche kidnaps a beautiful woman, and the hero storms into his castle to rescue her, but always fails. Of course, Kasiche also has weaknesses. Only Kasiche himself knows that. In the end, he was killed by the hero. He fell for the beautiful woman's trick and started bragging about his weakness. Xenia said, which Taikru still couldn't understand. Xenia seemed to be telling about herself. Then suddenly Tycru's thigh was pressed firmly by Xenia. Xenia's hand, which had been playing with Tycru's trunk, suddenly rose to Tycru's upper body. Xenia's gaze focused on Tycru's back. Then Xenia lowered his upper body and pressed her lips to Tycru's nape. The touch was soft, 
very different from before. The scent of Taikru's body pierced the tip of Xenia's nose. Xenia can't hold back her growing desire. He bites Taikru's neck very carefully. Taikru felt amused. Then Xenia smiled and whispered in Taikru's ear, You're not a pretty looking guy, but I can tell you Kasuchai's weakness. Xenia said while licking Taikru's ear, Taikru thought it was still a dream. The stories Xenia told were intertwined and connected without any connection. So Taikru felt like he was experiencing each dream in sequence. Xenia's voice was clear and loud. It wasn't a dream. Obviously, Xenia kept saying mysterious words whose meaning Taikru couldn't understand. Then Xenia continued her story again. There is an uninhabited castle in a vast land, and it cannot be reached by flying, riding, or walking. One could not reach it without turning into a fish, insect, or flying animal. And inside the castle was a very large and old tree, the same age as Kasiche. It is said that there is a large jewelry box to the south of the tree, and the jewelry box contains smaller jewelry boxes. Among them, there was one jewelry box that no one was looking for. Not too much and not too little compared to other things. Kasichai's heart may or may not be inside, but if we find it, Kasichai's heart, we can become Kasichai himself. Xenia said, Although Xenia explained it at length and in detail, Taikru still did not understand the meaning of Xenia's story. Then, Xenia lowered his body closer to Taiku's body. At the same time, Xenia's burly chest came into contact with Taikru's shoulder blades. The bodies drenched in sweat pressed against each other, and their body temperatures overlapped against each other. Xenia continued to kiss Taikru's shoulder with his lips. Taikru rolled his shoulders in annoyance, then said, You've done enough? Get out of here, Taikru said in an annoyed tone. But Xenia just smiled regardless of Taikru's words. Then Xenia placed her hand under Taikru's belly and again grasped Taikru's stiff trunk gently and rubbed Taikru's trunk with her hand. Taikru's back lifted up on its own. Taikru's mouth, which had been swearing, suddenly closed tightly. Taikru resignedly fell in Xenia's hand. Then she shook from the overwhelming sensation. Xenia glanced at Taikru's face, which showed an expression of pleasure. The kisses of Xenia's lips were placed at points along Taikru's spine. As Xenia's lips approached Taikru's buttocks mound, Taikru's body stiffened, then Xenia lightly squeezes Taikru's stiff buttocks, and then licks Taikru's hole without hesitation. While playing with Taikru's erect trunk, Xenia let out her voice again. I'll make you feel better, Xenia said in a soft tone. The hole that was already full of Xenia's thick liquid is now moistened again with her saliva.